Hi, I'm Katie Pooshpam. And welcome to Theatre Bound, a channel dedicated to all things theatre. And it's that time of the week for downstage discussions, where I discuss what's happening in theatre today. Or judging on when I upload this video last week. Or judging by the capability of my tech. And who knows? Here we go. Theatre time news. You tell me the news, news squirrel. What's happening? Ah, uh, what's happening out there? Up first, old versus new. The National Theatre was accused of dereliction of duty by Michael Billington for not programming enough classical drama in this year's programme of activities. And of course, a rap feud erupted from this. Similar to the one on 8 Mile, that film, between Michael Billington and Matt Truman. Okay, not really, it was actually quite a decent discussion between two articles. Billington discussed in his article on The Guardian that the National Theatre has a duty to keep classical drama alive, which is a fair point. But then Truman in his counter article, he states, well, we are in a different time, a time where Trump is president. So weird. And the director of the National Theatre has a duty to examine and represent the nation as it is now. Both actually make amazing points about a National Theatre in general and their duties as a National Theatre, posing a massive question that I haven't heard of in a while. Does a National Theatre have to stage classical drama? I'd actually love to hear from you about your thoughts on that. One thing I hate about theatres, which has really nothing got to do with this article, but I thought I'd bring it up. When certain countries, like the UK, decide to take Irish theatre makers as their own. Yeah, they're English now, because I've decided it. No, they're Irish. So, I thought I'd take this time to point out Irish theatre makers, not English. There's a big ass difference, an 800 year difference, okay? Samuel Beckett, he's Irish. James Joyce, really Irish. Oscar Wilde, Irish. Just cause Stephen Fry played him in a film, doesn't make him English. Jonathan Swift, he's Irish. Brendan Gleeson, have you seen him? He's so Irish, look at the head on him. It's Colin Farrell, he's not yours, he's ours. And he's from a posh area. Saoirse Ronan, Irish. Her name. Hey Sky News, dickheads. Martin McDonough. I don't know. I don't know about that one. WB Yates. Kathleen Nihulahan, very famous player of his. Super Irish. It's like, in fact about Irish independence. Got it. Thanks. Glad. Got to clear that up. Up next, Arts Council England is actually doing well. Over in the UK, the first trans-led theatre company is to be backed up by Arts Council England and will launch a Contact Manchester's annual LGBT Arts Festival. A new 2017. It's gonna be some dips. We're heading back into peaks again. So, what will they do? I'll leave a link in the description. It's from Arts Professionals, this article. Of course, I'm always talking about them. That the trans creative intends to raise visibility and widen opportunities for marginalized trans community groups to take part in the arts. This is amazing. Not only are they creating art, they're creating art that gives marginalized people an opportunity for their voice to be heard. And they also say they want to increase representation and nurture a confident trans community within the arts and in the wider culture. That was said by Kate O'Donnell, their artistic director. Woo! I can't wait to see what happens. Break a leg. Time for the weather. So I thought on another dreary day from Dublin that Talk about festivals coming up in Ireland. I haven't had time to go see any place. Really busy. So, expected weather to see in the summertime is sunshine and rain. Ireland is very confusing weather-wise in the summer. Let's just hope if I put this down, it'll be just sunshine. That's how that works. Such festivals coming up are Body and Soul Festival, visually outstanding. So much sunshine. What should you expect? A lot of people named Luna and Raindrop. These people are both irritating and everywhere. I don't mind people changing their names, obviously, but I don't know what it is. People who've changed their name to Luna, I think they think they own the moon and they know everything about the moon and you know nothing about the moon and they know everything about nature, okay? Got it, cause uh, Just say your name's Luna. Don't be annoying. They say their name is Luna. Run away. 
And you'll hear a lot of new artists there. Another love story in August. Expect a lot of glitter and pastels. And all the pictures, they look so clean. It's weird and like it's a proper grungy festival in the middle of a forest. Loads of new art there. It's beautiful and that's the beauty of festivals you get to promote new art and your new work it's amazing more sunshine slash clouds will be in september with electric picnic huge festival expect everyone expect everyone there you can expect bloody mary from down the road at electric picnic everyone goes there it's amazing they have loads of theater there and arts and discussions particularly Go check it out. And what should you bring to these festivals? A lot of baby wipes. Leave your dignity at the door. It doesn't belong there. Nope. And there's loads of other smaller festivals. I'll talk about that in my next Stall Search Discussions weather. That's the weather. Art equals free speech. An article on hyperallergic found these figures on art under threat by Free Muse, an independent international organization that researches the violations of artists' rights. So what did they find? This year they found a huge amount of reports of artists being either captured or attacked purely for going against the state's interests. The biggest one was in Iran. Following Iran is Turkey with 23 registered serious violations, Egypt with 18, Nigeria with 15 and Russia with 10. Every artist should have the freedom to produce their artwork without persecution. It actually is. These people are being prosecuted for the most minor reason because it slightly goes against the state and the interests of the state. Art is total freedom. Beautiful and magnificent. And people shouldn't be prosecuted for expressing their art. It's ridiculous. I'll leave a link in the description of how Free Muse and Art Under Threat are bringing all these issues to light and share it with your friends. Show the world so these lives and this art doesn't go unnoticed. Finally, things I found online that sometimes are theatre related, sometimes aren't. I just thought I'd share them with you. Uh, plays online. I'm going to leave a link, a few links in the description of really good plays online on YouTube. I think a few of them are Samuel Beckett. I can't remember the other ones. They'll be in the description for your viewing pleasure. And they're for free. Really cool playwright I'm reading about at the moment is Rodolfo Usigli. Usigli? I pronounced it really wrong. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. He was known as the playwright of the Mexican Revolution. Really fascinating. I've never heard of him, which was even more interesting. I'll leave a link. If you feel stressed, you should read this book. It's called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Informal talks on Zen meditation and practice by Shinru Suzuki. What's in there? Look how happy he looks. If you're cynical about the spiritual world like I am, this is the book for you. It's not a cynical book. It's just a very realistic point of view of Zen in your life, particularly for theater makers. It's stressful. Not really theater related, but maybe you wanted to know. Maybe not. Thank you so much for watching these images and sounds. Why not leave a like or a comment? I'd love to hear from you. What's happening in theater for you? What are you up to? Are you a theater maker? Something happening? Tell me, I'd like to know. And don't forget to subscribe. I upload two videos a week, downstage discussions and my regular theater bound videos, which are full of alternative theater information and alternative theater making weekly. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.